up, Sauce Gang, and welcome back to the channel. Hot Sauce Beats here with a massive reaction for you because the one, the only YouTube's historian, Oversimplified, is back with the Senate Second Punic War Oversimplified Part 1. He also dropped Part 2, and Part 3 is coming soon. I think Part 2 we're gonna react to come out tomorrow, and we also got our YouTube Play Button unboxing coming out tomorrow as well. I'm beyond hype for this. We've been waiting for this for over a year. Make sure you show Oversimplified some love by subscribing to the channel, and fam, we've officially officially passed 100,000 subs. We're trying to get to a quarter million, so if you haven't yet, please smash that subscribe button, join Sauce Gang family. But enough talking. Let's get to reacting and roll that bomb ass intro. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Eat, sleep, make beats. Hot sauce beats. Woo -hoo! Oh, it's time. Let's go. What are you still doing? Let's here? get our alert on. Woo! <laughs> Immediately after the, right. like within minutes. Our beloved mercenaries. Let's hear it. Oh, dude, I'm so hyped for this. Okay. Thank you one and for your hard work fighting in the First Punic War. Would have been nice if you'd won. Maybe tried a little harder, but maybe this just a little bit harder. Pointing convention. I know you all have one thing on your minds. Hey, when are we all getting paid? <laughs> Never! <laughs> Remember you lost your Okay. Jim, why don't you tell them? I'm not telling them, you tell them. Ugh. Look, you're not getting paid. What? We lost the First Punic War and owe the Romans a ton of reparations. Of course we can't pay you in full. Let's burn this place to the burn ground! Burn it to the ground, sucker! Hey, hey! Don't burn this place to the ground. Come on, fellas. Will killing us really make you feel better about your life? Every money? one of you. Yes. Every one of you. Oh, shit. oh to him real quick. Shut up, Jim. You're fired. I guess that makes two of us. Huh? 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 Ah! The second Punic War the is here. Of the first Punic War. Carthage's disgruntled mercenaries, left unpaid for all their hard work, revolted, and Carthage found itself caught up in an extremely destructive mercenary war. The panicked Carthaginians hired more mercenaries to fight the mercenaries they couldn't afford to pay. And Carthage came dangerously <laughs> close to collapse. All the while, across the water, there was Rome. Ha! Look at those morons. We just kicked their ass in the first Punic War, and now their own mercenaries are revolting. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Wait, first Punic War? You mean there's going to be a second one? Well, we're definitely taking advantage of this situation. So almost certainly, yes. The Romans did, in fact, take advantage of the situation. Suckers. Amongst the Suckers. chaos, rebels on the Carthaginian island of Sardinia sent out a cry for help to Rome. Hot diggity dog, said the Romans. Hot That's diggity, free diggity, diggity, diggity so, dog. Ooh, they went. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's our island. Get the hell off. Hey, they requested our help. We're simply helping. Oh, no, you don't. Look, we're sending our own army to deal with the rebels, okay? But just to be clear, we're not trying to start a fight with you, so, you know, don't declare war on us or anything. War! <laughs> we surrender! Right, and as war. part of the peace treaty, we get to keep these islands. No! The Carthaginians were mocking mad. As if their humiliating loss in the First Punic War wasn't bad enough, the Romans now took advantage of their mercenary problem and stole their islands. This shocking land grab was pretty hard to justify, even by Roman standards. <laughs> Additionally, the Romans now demanded Carthage pay them even more money on top of what was already owed. Bruh. If Rome was trying to make Carthage as mad as possible, they were doing a fantastic it. job. Fantastic the the war were being sown, and they were being watered with Carthaginian tears. <laughs> Resentment <laughs> in Carthage only continued to grow. Eventually, Carthage solved their mercenary problem thanks to Carthaginian military genius and hero of the First Punic War, Hannibal? Hamilcar Barca. Hamilcar. He sorted those oh, naughty mercenaries out <laughs> with some Hamilton. good old-fashioned atrocities, and the destructive mercenary war was over. Still, all was not well in Carthage. Mere decades ago, they were the top dogs in the Western Mediterranean. Now, after the crushing defeat in the First Punic War, and a huge bill How to pay the How do they even Rome. have soldiers Carthage left, chat? well and truly under Rome's thumb. <laughs> what on earth were they supposed to do? 
If they wanted any chance at regaining their former strength, there was one thing they needed now, Money. more than anything. Money. But as long as they owed Rome a bazillion dollars, there was nothing they a could do. A a lot, chat. Fortunately for them, amongst their ranks, there was one big hunk of a man with one big clump of a brain. <laughs> Me! Hamilcar Barca! Hamilcar! Yes. Wait, why do you all have the exact same voice? <laughs> I have it too! That's right! Nah. Hero of the First Punic War, greatest general alive, Hammer. and the poster above my bed, Hamilcar <laughs> Baca had an idea. <laughs> All right, we need money? I look at him well, every I've night! Got one word for you Spain. An area filled with lucrative silver mines, from which the silver would flow like a river, and our pockets would be stuffed, like Tony's mother at a buffet. Hey! So here's my proposal. Boss. You send Boss. me with an army to Spain. I'll expand our territory, get those silver mines up and running, and we'll be able to pay the Romans back in no time. Okay. But just to check, you're not secretly raising the money to go on a bloodthirsty revenge spree against Rome, are you? Because we can't afford that. Hanno, my dear. I'm simply going to pay them back. Dun, dun, well, dun. Sure. Few in Carthage were as bitter about their loss in the First Punic War as Hamilcar Barca. 98% of his brain matter had been reallocated to thoughts of revenge. He was also fed up with the Carthaginian Jeez. politicians so for what he deemed a cowardly... Bro! They're playing Catan! They're playing Catan! ...the betrayal when they surrendered at the end of the last war. And so for Hamilcar, going to Spain meant being able to act independently from the weak Carthaginian government, building his own strength, and then perhaps somewhere down the line, revenge. Turn him to the ground! He wasn't going to Spain by himself. Hannibal? Yes, father? Would you like to come with me to build an empire in Spain? Oh boy, would I? Barbara, oh boy, mind if I take I? our nine-year-old son with me? I want to implant an intense hatred of Roman him and prepare him for a glorious campaign of vengeance. <sighs> Just try not to traumatize him, dear. No promises. The young boy Hannibal would accompany his father. Watching, learning. Boy, you see that city over there? Yes, father? That is Rome. Do you know what we do to Romans? No, father. We hate them, Hannibal. We hate them with every fiber of our being. But why, father? Every Can't atom of our body. No, son. They took everything from us. Our land, our wealth, our pride. Those animals. Yeah. I'll tear them loose Feel that the hatred. I'll burn their pathetic city to the ground. Dad? <laughs> I'm sorry, son. I've, I've just never been so proud. Keep going. I'll slaughter their people. <laughs> I'll cut off their faces and wear them as masks. <laughs> I love you, son. After taking Hannibal to the Temple of Baal and having him swear an oath never to be a friend of Rome, off dad and son went for their lovely beach holiday in Spain. But Spain beach was holiday. already inhabited by many tribes people. And when Hamilcar suddenly showed up in their territory, they were like, hey, who the hell are you? What are you doing here? I'm teaching my son how to become a warrior like me. Aw, well that's sweet. Well then, little guy, let's see what you got. Good boy. As Hamilcar got to work fighting the tribes of Iberia and expanding Carthaginian influence, Hannibal became a child of war, even earning battle scars from a young age. And he grew wow. to become a great military leader himself, making his father little, little Hamilcar. proud. I love you so much, son. Dad, not in front of the enemy. Then. You yep. killed that guy so well, son. <laughs> the Barkas successfully consolidated Carthaginian power, got those wow. silver mines up and running, and were sending buckets of cash back to a money-starved Carthage. And Sheesh. symbolizing Carthage's regrowing strength, a beautiful new city would eventually be founded in Spain. New Carthage, with a magnificent palace at its center. Carthage yeah, is yeah. back, baby! What in the name of Apollo is going on here? Uh -oh. <laughs> Romans! Flowing silver mines? Dancing elephants? What are you up to, Hamilcar? I'm simply gathering the money to pay you back. Oh. Well, okay then. Or are you rebuilding strength to go on a bloodthirsty revenge spree? Like I said, Claudius, <laughs> I'm simply trying to pay, to pay you, you back. back! Aw. You guys are hugging. No, we're not. 
I was. <laughs> I was hugging. <laughs> Hamilcar had practically carved out a kingdom for himself in Spain, free from the meddling Carthaginian politicians. His power was becoming immense. But Dad, yes, my son? I'm confused. Are we really simply paying the Romans back? We're not no. going to go on a bloodthirsty revenge spree? Of no, course we are. we are. I'm just saying that to get the Romans off our backs. Listen, here's the most important life lesson I have for you. Ooh, tell vengeance us. is everything. An all-encompassing thirst for vengeance is great for your mental health. Are you still confused? No, no, I get it now. But no, no, What if the they're Romans there. find out what we're up to? They won't find out. Why? Well, Hannibal, because I use NordVPN. Yeah, baby, NordVPN! I'm confused again. Do you like your computer being hacked, all your passwords being stolen, and used to create a fake virtual you who drains your mom's bank account? Me neither. And that's why I use NordVPN. These days, hackers are only getting smarter, while you're only getting dumber. Whether it's convincing phishing attacks, fake oh Wi-Fi boy. networks, or clicking your aunt's Facebook post that opens the door to a hacker party as always, you'll be oh supporting my. my channel. So thank you. Now where were we? Oh yeah. Carthaginian Tears, a child of war, and the Carthaginian Conquest of Spain. The Carthaginian recovery had been staggeringly quick, and Rome was seriously <gasps> alarmed. But they were also preoccupied with ongoing wars elsewhere, including an expansionist war to the north, where they were enslaving thousands of people. They're always accounts. growing. They're so Rome's that, always trying to, to take keep over. Carthage in check, the Romans insisted on a new treaty. See this river. The two sides agreed that everything above it was in Rome's sphere of influence, while beneath it was Carthage. Under no circumstances were the Carthaginians to expand north of that river. But for now, illegal. Hamilcar and son were living it up. Well, son, here's to many more years of successful campaigning in Spain. Now, if you'll excuse me, I just have to go fight those guys. See you later, son. I love you. <gasps> what the? Oh, crap. I drowned? Oh, well. Always remember, son. Oh. You are vengeance. Son's gonna go bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. my browsing history. Hamilcar Barca was tragically ambushed at a river and drowned. His son-in-law, and possibly also his lover, no further questions, took charge for a while. But he too was later assassinated, leaving finally a 26-year-old yeah. Hannibal in charge of the Hannibal. country I knew it was the name Hannibal. in Spain. Sources say the men readily accepted him as their leader. He chose to suffer the same hardships as his men. He lived in the same conditions, was often the first into battle and the last one out. And it also helped that he looked a lot like his dad. He had the total respect of his men. If he said jump, they said how high. How high? If he said tuck me in, they said how tight. If he said talk to a girl without peeing your pants, they said that's impossible. Nobody can do that. <laughs> An army that would follow him anywhere would be crucial for exacting his vengeance against Rome. Hannibal's army had become a strong and loyal fighting force, and that was making a certain nation very uncomfortable. Seeing Carthage re-strengthen so quickly was not something Rome had expected, yet here they were, paying off their debts and expanding their territory. It didn't feel very much like Carthage was under Rome's thumb at all, and Rome wanted <laughs> gotcha, to put sucker. an end to it. Tensions were strung tighter than your liar's G-string, and all it would take was one incident to trigger all-out war. Second and Punic War! A city in Spain would find itself at the very center of that fateful incident. Segundum. Remember that treaty declaring everything south of this river to be Carthage's sphere of influence? Well, Segundum should therefore obviously be Carthaginian, right? Wrong! Saguntum had actually scored itself an informal alliance with Rome after Rome had helped it with an internal dispute. With Carthaginian encroachment, Saguntum began to fear for its independence, and Rome declared itself Saguntum's protector. But oh, wow. this clearly went against the Ebro River Treaty. So what on earth was Rome doing? Were the Saguntines and the Romans truly just BFFs? <laughs> it's possible. 
Or was Rome yeah. deliberately Maybe. trying to interfere Maybe. with Hannibal's Spanish expansion and maintain a staging post for a future war with Carthage? More likely. And Hannibal certainly viewed this Rome Saguntum alliance as an outrage. Yet another example of Roman arrogance. At first, he left Saguntum alone. But Saguntum. having learnt from his father to hate all things Roman, yeah, I'm the dream of bringing Rome okay. to its knees, more and more, Hannibal may have begun to see Saguntum as an opportunity. Could this controversial alliance be just what devilish little Hannibal needed to kickstart a second war with Rome and restore Carthaginian dominance? It's even possible that Rome <laughs> were also using Saguntum to goad Hannibal into a fight so they could go and kick him out of Spain. And as the two giants began gearing up for I don't know what's going to happen. Two, I feel like I'm rooting for Carthage, bro. Saguntum had no idea that they were about to be crushed in the collision. Hey, your alliance with Saguntum is an insult and we won't stand for it. They're our friends, Hannibal. And if you lay a finger on them, it'll be an act of war. Yeah, Hannibal. Back the hell off. War, eh? Oh, no, you did it. I might just be no, you did it. And massacre their people. I hope you do, Hannibal. Find out what happens. Yeah, we hope you do, Hannibal. Wait, what? Maybe I will. Go ahead, kill them all. Uh, okay then, fine, fine. Okay, guess I'll do just that. Consul, we look forward to it. Consul? You're gonna protect us though, right, Consul? Consul! Consul! Rome, come here! Down, oh, no! To top it all off, when the Saguntine people made the genius decision of raiding into Carthaginian territory, enough was enough. In an action that was guaranteed to provoke the Romans into war, Hannibal besieged the city. The siege of Saguntum lasted eight cruel months before what? Hannibal broke through the city defenses and turned eight Saguntum months? into a killing field. It was a massacre. What the hell? Tell me I didn't just catch you massacring our friends, the Sugantees. Well, Consul, if you like the Sugantees so much, perhaps you should suck on these nuts. Yeah! Let's suck on these nuts! Hearing <laughs> word of the attack on Saguntum, on Rome was nuts. understandably in an uproar, and all eyes were now fixated on what would happen next as Rome sent a delegation to Carthage, led by one of the most highly esteemed Roman senators, Fabius Maximus. Maximus. He demanded an answer for Hannibal's sins. All right, listen up, scum. You've got a rogue general in Spain attacking a Roman ally. What are we supposed to do about it? Well, there shouldn't have even been a Roman ally in Spain. You're the aggressor here. Hand Hannibal over to us as a criminal so we can punish him severely. No, yes, no, yes. no. Look, I hold in the folds of my toga both peace and war. Which one should I let drop? Whichever one you want, then I choose. Yeah! <laughs> the Second Punic War had It's begun. time! Pack it up, boys. We've got them. We already destroyed these clowns once, and we were the underdogs. Now, we're the overdogs? Hot dogs. Exactly. Hot this dog, is gonna hot be dog, easy. hot diggity hey, dog. Here's the plan. Consul Longus, you take your army and sail straight for Carthage. Burn that city to the ground. And Consul Scipio, you just head on over to Iberia and make sure this Hannibal guy doesn't do anything crazy. I mean, what's he gonna do? Cross the Alps? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to what? Cross the Alps. We're going to what? I just Cross told you, the Hannibal Alps! We'll freeze to death. Trust me, Jerome. The Romans are expecting us to fight the same way we did last time. Passively. You get that taking exact the same, yeah. They think it's gonna be E. You get the same result. Z. So this time, we have to be aggressive. We have to go on the attack. It sickens me to say this, but this time, we have to be a little more Roman. Roman. <gasps> you mean we're gonna take poops and baths together? But I'm insecure about my hairy legs. No, I'm saying <laughs> this time, we're gonna take poops the fight and to baths? Them. Think about it. Rome thinks they're simply going to invade us and win the war. So when they suddenly find themselves being invaded from the north, they'll freak out. Like Tony's mother, when the buffet runs out of shrimp. Hey! I gotta admit, 
It's actually kind of genius. And my heavy genius! legs will insulate me from the yes! cold. That's the spirit. Hannibal, you have my sword and my spear and my legs. Buzz. <laughs> Buzz. Hannibal's plan, a daring alpine trek to surprise the Romans, was a bold but risky strategy. If it paid off, he could catch the Romans with their pants down, but he could also end up losing a ton of men and supplies in the hostile mountain conditions. Nevertheless, in 218 BC, with you a fire this. in his eyes and, and some his vengeance belly. in his belly, and a for Hannibal death. brought his force of almost 100,000 men across the Ebro River. They spent months on the road, trekking through the cold, hostile mountain conditions. And when they finally reached the other side, they said, Hooray! We did it! We crossed the Alps. No, those were the Pyrenees. Those are the Alps. Oh. After crossing the Pyrenees, the army then had to pass through southern Gaul, a vast territory filled with tribespeople, many of whom were hostile to Hannibal's presence. His journey to the Alps was an ordeal in itself, as he was forced to oh, wow. fight his way through and incurred pretty hefty losses before even reaching the mountains. His plan was almost stopped in its tracks entirely, as the Roman consul Scipio, on his way to Iberia, discovered Hannibal was right on his doorstep. Oh, no, Suddenly, no, no, no. Hannibal's journey became a race as he rushed to get his massive army across the vast Rhone River before the Romans could intercept him. The crossing was chaotic, with the panicking elephants causing several men to drown. And the first combat of the war occurred when small scouting parties from each side encountered one another. When Scipio finally caught oh, up no, to no, no, Hannibal's no, no. position, what he found was an empty Carthaginian camp. Hannibal had slipped through his fingers. Yeah, baby! The Roman consul Scipio felt the weight of the situation. Quite unbelievably, Hannibal was going to cross the Alps into Italy, and the Romans had no idea where he would emerge. For the first time, <laughs> a Carthaginian force had the Roman homeland under threat. Scipio sent his men onto Iberia as planned, but he himself rushed home to raise a new army so that if Hannibal survived the crossing, Scipio would be there, waiting. Would you look at that, boys? We're here! The Alps! Although it is a little later than I expected. Yeah, it's kind of chilly. We'll set up camp here and wait for spring, right? It's way too cold, right? Wrong. Hannibal? Hannibal's famous crossing of the Alps was brutal. It was already autumn, and the men suffered terribly. It was cold. Men would fall off the sides of icy cliffs. They starved. They fell off the sides of icy cliffs. Some sources say they had to eat their pack animals and would finish off dying comrades in order to take their clothes for extra warmth. And then they would fall off the sides of icy cliffs. I'm Imagine guessing they fell off the sides of icy cliffs. 50,000 men with all of their horses, supplies, and 37 elephants trying to navigate the most hostile mountain range in Europe. And it wasn't just nature that they were up against. Tribes people Amen. lived in the mountains, and they couldn't believe what they were seeing. A tribe Mommy, approached snacks. Hannibal and said, Hey man, geez, that's some nice armor. What is that, gold? Man, I'd really like that armor. Hey boss, they've got food as well. Shut up, be cool. Hey, why don't you let us guide you through this narrow gorge? We're not oh, going to kill you or nothing. Just walk right on through there. We're not going to kill you. It's just right this way. Death trap. We're not gonna kill you. Hannibal's army were forced to fight their way through the gorge Jesus, as massive dude. boulders rained down on them from above. Some clever reorganization of his line helped them survive and they were able to fend off the opportunistic tribes. But losses from the constant attacks were heavy. As the journey continued, men who went over the sides would get stuck on the ice sheets below and had to make a grisly choice between starving to death or just getting it over with. When the deeply demoralized army reached the summit and rested for a couple days, Hannibal tried to lift their spirits with a rousing speech. Look, men, down there, it's Rome. These plains stretching out in front of you are bountiful with food to eat and Romans to kill. Yeah! Move, kill all of them. Look, you have just climbed the walls of Rome. The hard part is over. From here on out, it's all downhill. Let's go, baby! And nobody else will die. 
Except for them. The rest of us here, no one dies. Starting now. Right now. Okay, let's go. Oh, for goodness sake! As it turned out, the descent was as deadly as the way up. With the cold uh. really starting to set in, the path became even more narrow. And at one point, the men spent three days in the freezing cold, repairing a collapsed road. When they finally reached the bottom, Hannibal said, Look, guys, we did it. Oh. Well, I thought it went really well. When Hannibal left Spain, he had about 100,000 men. By the time he reached the Italian plains, his numbers had dwindled to about 26,000. Wow. He was 75%. now caught in enemy territory without a supply line or source of reinforcements. And any elephants who had survived to this point were almost certainly traumatized. So what on earth was <laughs> Hannibal up to? This supposed military genius had just led a starving and weakened army right into enemy territory. Any modern general who lost half their men to mountains would be immediately fired and possibly even depensed on live TV. Here's the thing. While Hannibal may not have planned on losing quite so many men, he had almost certainly expected considerable losses, and he always had a plan for how to replace them. Need men? Northern Italy was full of men. Big, burly Celtic men. All the men Hannibal would ever need to beat off Rome. These Celts were filled with resentment, having only recently been conquered by Rome. Hannibal hoped oh, to be seen smart. as a liberator, convince the Celts to cut ties with Rome, and instead join him in crushing Rome. That way, yeah. he could gain a source of reinforcements and supplies right in Rome's backyard. But sir, in order to win the loyalty of the Celts, we would need to make a seriously favorable impression on them. How do we get them to like us? Hmm. Kill them. One of Hannibal's first actions in Italy was to obliterate a nearby tribe who wouldn't join him. This sent a clear message to all the other tribes. It was his wrath they should fear, not Rome's. The realization that a Carthaginian army had just invaded them must have been shocking for the Romans. Yeah. But when they looked at this ragtag group broken by the Alps, they couldn't have felt very intimidated. However, Hannibal was now in Italy, and he was about to embark on one of the most astonishing military campaigns Dude, this in is all so good, of Jay. human history. The Romans may not have known I'm, it yet, I'm stuck for but there the was second now a monster tomorrow. loose in their territory, and he was vying for Roman blood. Tomorrow is part two. Oh, all right, let me bring you in chat. Bruh, welcome back, Oversimplified. This was absolutely amazing, dude. I cannot wait for part two. Again, he's just like the best storyteller. I mean, most people, you guys have let me know in school, they show Oversimplified videos. Like teachers are using his videos to teach their students. It's amazing. And now we're cheering for Carthage. Hannibal's a, an amazing dude. Such a good leader. I'm so stoked to see what happens in part two. And again, there's a part three coming out as well. Let me know what you guys think. This was an absolute blast reacting to this. Make sure you show Oversimplified some love by subscribing to their channel. And fam, if you've not yet, please smash that subscribe button. Join the Gang family. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And remember, it's easy sleeping, make beats. And as usual, be kind of one another. That's all I got. Boom, I'm out. Come on, love. Sauce Gang, peace out, champ.